Turning our clocks back over 100 years, we resume a walk around Deal as it was in those long lost days. The Mary Hotham Almshouses, formerly occupied by the Coast Guard, were presented to the town in 1891 by the Mayor, Captain George Coleman, for the benefit of the old and infirm Deal boatman. At the junction of the High Street and College Road, facing Alfred Square is the Caxton Seaside Home, known as Lloyd Memorial in recognition of donations made by the family of Mr Edward Lloyd. Walking from here southwards, we arrive at Duke Street, a short street connecting the High Street with West Street, and at its end, the site of St Andrew's Church, an early building with a spire that was erected in 1850, at a cost of £7,000. The east window is a memorial of the Countess of Clanwilliam. Continuing our walk, Along the High Street brings us up to the Town Hall, which was erected in 1803 and added to in 1883. It did at this period contain a collection of Roman glass pottery found at Warmer in 1901, portraits of William III and William IV along with other local celebrities. Dill's first charter was granted in 1699. At the corner of the hall is a fountain presented in 1875 by Earl Granville. A few yards away from here, separated by St George's Place, is St George the Martyr, a Queen Anne style building erected in 1715. Arriving at Stanhope Road, just off the High Street, stands the General Post Office, a Flemish looking red brick building with a chequered gable. Adjoining this building is the Winter Gardens Theatre, where entertainments and theatrical events take place, now known as the Astor. Just to the south of Stanhope Road is the Charter Institute, where residents and visitors can take recreation. Within this building are well-furnished reading rooms, a billiard room, a lending library and baths. Admission was available for a small fee. Here, along at 51A High Street, was a miniature rifle range open to all visitors. The Dill Potteries, near the level crossing, which lie at the rear of now where Hutchins Timber Yard stands, used to be open to visitors every Thursday afternoon from 2 till 5 p.m. Arriving back along the seafront, here is the Prince of Wales Terrace, which was then mostly boarding houses, and the South Eastern Hotel, which belonged to Southern Railway Company, containing about 70 bedrooms, most of which look seaward, a large restaurant and many public rooms. Originally, the site of the Prince of Wales Terrace and adjoining roads was occupied by the large and important Navy Yard from the time of Elizabeth down to 1864. Around hereabouts, Perkin Warbeck's men landed in 1495, but were captured by the highly trained bands from Sandwich. Their bodies were hung on gibbets as a warning to others. 